keep it clean. I was backward at going forward and why I didn't know. There was people said I was shy and others called me slow. My father blamed my mother for raising me a lazy son. She maintained it was his fault that all his crowd was out. <laughs> Why don't you go away out and get a woman, he used to say to me. When I was your age, the better least I had was two or three. But there's one wee tip I'll give you. Well, it worked for me when I was young. If you're not in bed at 12 o'clock, then you would be fair better off at home. <laughs> See? <laughs> I had me eye on Mary Ann this last eight years or so. Now, the only thing that held me back was just in case she might say no. <laughs> See, the problem was I turned her down back in her younger days. Mind you, it's not that she's got any better looking. <laughs> it's just I'm not as hard to please. <laughs> if I told you she was ugly, I wouldn't be telling lies. <laughs> you know, she once worked in a butcher shop just to keep away the fly. <laughs> well, I had got to the stage when it came to looks, I didn't give a damn, and I know you'll say it was just as well if you saw the cut of Mary Ann. <laughs> From time to time, I'd meet her down about the shop, but I never had the courage just to bring the subject up. Mm. I knew she still was cool with me since I turned her down that time. But now that she has got the bit of land and the money, I have got to change my mind. <laughs> I was in contact with a man, an expert in these things, who swore to me he had a plan, and he told me to get the rings. Now, says he, if you will follow my get-a-woman plan, I'll guarantee you within a week I'll have a rating from your hand. Next time that you see her, you pay her a lot of heed. Look closely at what she's wearing and see if there's anything she might need. Perhaps a scarf around her neck or something for her hair. And if you like the plan, come back to me and we'll take it all from there. But it was just two evenings later I was out behind the buyer and I made up my mind to go for it. Or should I say, God loves to try her. <laughs> sure, after all, I'd be no worse off if so big she says no. I just remind her that I was right the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it was just two evenings later, I was going down to have a pint. And who did I see but Mary Ann coming, peddling on the bike? And just as I was meeting her, there came this great big truck, well, that nearly blew the clothes plane off her. And did I get one right good look? <laughs> Mind you, there wasn't a whole pile she needed, <laughs> as far as I could see. All her bits and bobs was covered from just about the knee. <laughs> but just at the last second, I spied what a man had buy for the woman he loves. It was sitting there in front of me. She wasn't wearing gloves. <laughs> I went into town the next Thursday on the bus from the van to try and buy a pair of gloves, the first pair to the plane. I told me Mae what I was doing and could she recommend a cane? She said it'd fit you better buy them for yourself and that to be always wearing mine. <laughs> and then says she, should I go with you? You might need me to try them on. Well, it's not the way I had planned it, so I thought I'd better play along. She says, come on into that paper shop that belongs to Fred McVickers. I'm in an awful state for a pair of pants, you know, that's what girls now call it. Knickers. <laughs> well, when I got into the draper shop, I was completely mesmerized because when the shopman asked me, so I didn't know her size. I stood there like he knew in Egypt I didn't know what to do. God says, there you had me there. But she's about a seven in a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I bought a pair about her size as far as I could tell. A lovely pair of leather ones that had a gorgeous smell. And I saw a pair of men's gloves there sitting on the shelf. And I thought about what May had said, so I bought them for myself. <laughs> then he gave me this long list of instructions what to do if the gloves got soiled or wet. So see, will, will you remember all I told you? Says, I know, don't you fret. I looked over at the mother, she seemed to have her business done. Says, I may, you better shape yourself or the last bus will be gone. <laughs> when I got home, I started thinking of all the things I had to say to Mary Ann. So I got a pen and paper and I wrote the whole lot down. See, 
I knew that I'd be nervous and live out here what should be said. So it seemed to make much more sense to write the whole lot down instead. Mm. Later on I washed and shaved so I'd be looking nice and splashed on what was left in an old bottle of old spice. Says I, man, where's the shopping? <laughs> she says it's laying in the bed. When I thought I was picking up the package with the gloves, didn't I bring the knickers up instead? Oh, and <laughs> I left the house, as pleased as punch, not realizing what I had done. Just up on the old tractor and I got started on the run. When I arrived at Mary Ann, I could see she was alone, so I parked the tractor on another slope and I pointed her for home. I sort of sneaked up to the front door and Anna did it now. When Mary Ann came out, says I, I'd like to talk. Here's a wee something for you I bought in my vicar shop, and I handed her the present with the letter on the top. <laughs> she began to open up the envelope, oh, I said, Mary Ann, you better open up the present first, and I will read the letter. <laughs> well, the plan was going perfect, I thought I'd have a fag. I felt like the dog that had the two tails, I didn't know which of them to wag. <laughs> <laughs> but when she opened up the present, she didn't look one bit pleased. The bit in her grin that was there before had quickly been erased. God says I, she doesn't like the gloves, and I felt an awful dread. Says I, will I read the letter now? I can't wait for it, she said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wrote you this wee letter, my dearest Mary Ann. To explain about the present, I hope you'll understand. See, the last time that I saw you, I noticed you hadn't any eyes. So I bought you these, and I hope you're pleased, and that they'll keep you warm. Now, why I took this liberty, you're wondering, I suppose. Well, I could see your skin was turning blue round when it was exposed. Aye, and the mouth flies and midges, and that east wind they can bite. And I could see you were catching the front of it when I saw you on the bike. <laughs> you know, I really liked them when I saw them on the shelf. In fact, I liked them so much I bought a pair myself. <laughs> see, when it was cold I'd wear my mother's, but I thought it wasn't fair that I was wearing them so much and they were the only pair. <laughs> oh boy, and Mary Ann. If you should ever wet them, <laughs> you might now who can tell why you're not supposed to wash them and only lose the lovely smell. <laughs> and if you should ever doctor them, well, just rub them with a rag and you can blow into them from time to time. They say it helps them not to say. <laughs> Now, I don't know if it's superstitious, my dearest Mary Ann, but for myself, I have to say, I'm a very superstitious man. So if you should ever drop them, which now and again I hope you'll do, they say it's bad luck to pick up your own, so I'll pick them up for you. <laughs> now, every time you put them on, I hope you're cosy as can be. And every time you take them off, I hope you'll think of me. <laughs> You might find them a wee bit tight at first, <coughs> but that's because they're new. But don't you worry, when I'm with you, I'll pull them off for you. <laughs> <laughs> but be now the face of the fly in the middle <coughs> I thought she'd blow a fuse, and the language that was coming out of her, I never heard a woman use. Your F and B and your humpy C were some of the nicer things she called me. <laughs> I she read me seven generations and ridiculed my pedigree. <laughs> Twas only then I saw the knickers and realised the mistake I'd made. I tried to explain about the mix-up and the presents, but it was an unforgiven plea. With every word that came out of her, her voice was getting higher. <laughs> and didn't she take my brand new pair of drawers and flung them in the fire? <laughs> Get out to here, you pervert. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, she scattered me with a falutor to the jaw. She said, I didn't see it coming. It took me right off my feet, and in the melee that followed, I lost my cap and look at see her. Well, I gathered up my arms and balls, and I made a quick retreat. The news was still being huddled at me as I staggered across the street. Will you take that rag with you? And likewise, that heap of scrap. <coughs>
Well, as I, I, I free wheel down the driveway, I was hopping off each day. <laughs> Me years the worst hill traveling from the back to the old bitch. <laughs> I was glad that I escaped from her and that I had survived. I was never as close in all my life to being yet alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, and sitting here with a hump on me this last number of hours and thinking, wasn't I this silly pellet that didn't bring her up a bunch of flowers? <laughs> <laughs> and whenever I meet your expert, I'll tell him to take his plan and to show it <laughs> for the sun don't shine and to hell with Mary Ann. <laughs>